not not too bad, thank you. Yeah, I'm um, I'm still reading Enjoy Life Forever. Uh, okay. I'm now a bit stuck on the overlapping generation. I was wondering if you could please help. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, um, there's a, a broadcast that was released. I've, I've a year seen ago. it. Yes, Mr. S Mr. Splain. He pointed to a, to a whiteboard, and he um, gave the example of Fred W. Franz. That's the one. Yeah, but he gives absolutely no scriptural evidence that there is an overlapping generation. I mean, Matthew twenty four thirty four uses generation in the singular. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation singular will by no means pass away till all these things are fulfilled. Um, but looking at your literature, like, um, is it God's Kingdom Rules? God Something Rules is mm -hmm. the name of the book. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it God's Kingdom Rules? Yeah, it's a purple book. Ah, yeah. Um, pages 11 and 12, they talk about two generations overlapping. Well, two generations would be a plural word for generations. But Jesus uses a singular word for generation in Matthew twenty four thirty four. I don't really get that. And Mr. Mr. Splain gave no explanation, forgive the pun. He, he gave no explanation of this at all, you see. Okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, we, I can certainly have a little look at things and maybe send you some information back and stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean... I will have read the information. What I'm looking for is to talk to someone who, who can explain it rather than just send me information. Um, okay. I mean, to me... I'll see what I can do then. Yeah, sure, thank you. I mean, to me, it's fairly obvious that in Matthew 24, Jesus is talking about two events. He's talking about the, the apostles don't understand that these events are separate. They think they happen at the same time, which they don't. Um, the, the two events are the destruction of the temple with the sign of the destruction of the temple and the end of the age and Jesus' return, and then the sign of the end of the age and Jesus' return. Um, Matthew confusingly groups things in threes. You'll find that they ask him four questions. The fourth question is uh, alluded to in Mark 13, 4. But obviously, the two events are the destruction of the temple in AD 70, and then Christ's return at the end of the age. Um, Christ's return, the end of the age, is, is Matthew twenty four thirty six. The destruction of the temple is verse 34. And Jesus is simply saying that the generation that, that listens to him, some of them will still be alive when the temple is destroyed in AD 70. And I think that's all that Jesus is saying there. He's got, I don't think he's okay. got any allusion whatsoever to the year 1914 or to the First World War. I mean, England won the World Cup in 1966. We beat Germany... 4-2 yeah. at, 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 at Wembley Stadium in London. Well, there's as much evidence for Matthew 24, 34, pointing to England winning the World Cup in 1966 as there is to 1914. So is it... So just so I'm aware, so I know where the best put my time into looking into things, is it you wanted to know about the... In effect, the, the, the meaning of the... the Prophets, sorry, the meaning of the generations, or is it you have wonder whether the kingdom was established in 1914? Your book, God's Kingdom Rules, page 11 and 12, talks about two generations. It uses yeah, a plural that's, that's word. Right. I, I understand, but I'm just wondering for yourself, because yeah. you mentioned two thoughts. Is it the generations, or, I mean, do, do you accept that God's kingdom began ruling in 1914 from heaven or is absolutely that absolutely not? not no no okay. there's there's no proof for that at all it's the fact that when jesus uses the word generation in matthew 24 34 it's a singular whereas in contrast to that your book god's kingdom rule pages 11 and 12 uses generations in the plural yeah, yeah. i mean just putting that one on 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 hold just for a sec yes um what about things like the prophecy of the 70 weeks of years or to do with the understanding um in daniel with the, the day for a year and the three and a half times it still gets us to 1914 you need to be precise and you need to be pacific and you need to read the verse yeah, I'm not talking about that verse, I'm talking about other verses. Yes, I know, I, I know, about. but if, if you're going to be alluding to passage in Daniel, you need to read Daniel. I mean, if, if you're alluding to the seven times, it's Daniel 4.16, or Daniel yeah. 4.32. Uh, 
uh, Daniel 4.16, let this heart be changed from that of a man, let him be given the heart of an animal, and let seven times pass over him. That's all it says, let seven times pass over him. That's, yeah, that's that, right. That's repeated in verse 32. Yeah. That's all it says, seven times. Okay. Right. So, it's, it's, it's the point of, so what, is what you would like to know, because um, I'm, I'm currently at work, so I haven't sure. got too long I can spend on things. I've sure, just picked up sure, the phone sure. and answered to yourself. But it was just it, to try and understand it, what it is you, you it, want to clarify. Is it the generations, or is it you, you want evidence to sort of suggest that the kingdom began ruling in 1940? Which would you say is the one that you, you want more... Because I think the goal of this is to either, um, when it comes to ones like yourself that's wrong in the past, to be able to know about various parts of in the Bible, is it is the goal to have a better understanding, or is the goal to either, like, well, what's the goal? To, to give you a better clarity on understanding of the Bible's prophecies, or is it to kind of disprove that what Job's Witnesses have written is wrong? Which is the goal from you? I want to understand the Bible. Get back to okay. the Bible. So if you want to discuss something you you give me the reference to the verse daniel four sixteen, for instance you read the verse it says seven times it does not say 2520 years it says seven times now yeah. it was a cl crazy insane clergyman called the reverend john aquila brown writing a, in a book called the eventide in 1923 it's either a book or a magazine i forget which but in 1923, this insane clergyman, the Reverend John Aquila Brown, came up with the idea that seven times means seven times 360 years, which is 2,520. That was the basis for the Adventist movement and William Miller's prophecy that if you count 2,520 years from a, a specific date in the Old Testament, you come up with the return of Christ in 1844. Now, there is no proof for that at all. That then, the movement, the Adventist movement imploded, it, did, it destroyed itself in 1844, when after, I think he had three stabs, 1843 and then twice in 1844, he got the date of Christ's return wrong, Christ didn't return. That fell apart, but the people who still hold, held on to this uh, crazy belief that seven times means 2,520 years, they became known as the Adventists. The most famous branch are the Seventh-day Adventists. Russell was connected to a different branch called the Second Adventists. If you're going to make a statement or a claim, you need to go back to the scripture and say, this is why we believe 1914. It's all based on the seven times of Daniel 4.16 and Daniel 4.32. And it doesn't even say 2,520 years. You're just assuming that. I mean, I could take that date and say that it, it applies to England winning the World Cup in 1966. If you get 2,520 years from such and such a date in the Old Testament, you come up with England winning the World Cup in 1966. Or I could take a different date and come up with the destruction of the Twin Towers in New York in 2001. Y you can read anything into the Bible. So what I'm looking for is specifics, precise, specific details. If, if you could help with that, I don't see an overlapping generation in the Bible. That's my, my problem. Okay. Thank you. That's fine. Other things I did, I'll just, just, just kind of ponder on then. Not that, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not a philosopher or anything of that regard, so I'm not going to be able to come up with anything kind of mind-boggling. But I suppose... When when do you believe that the last days or the sign of Christ's presence? Do you believe that we're we're experiencing it? We're near it. We're in it. It's still to come. It's not come yet. I mean, what would you be, understand? You need to be precise because again, you're asking me certain. You're referring to me several things that are vague. I prefer one thing that's precise rather than yeah, several yeah, things that are vague. Be yourself. Okay, we'll go to Christ's presence. Well, obviously, as you've read, 1914's when they've said the kingdom was established from the books that you've read. From your opinion, do you believe it's been established? It's not what? been established? It's soon to be established? Uh, God's kingdom, the ruling in heaven. You're asking me, again, you, you, you started off in Christ's presence, then you're going on to 
Christ's kingdom, you're asking me different things. And then you started off asking in the last days. You're asking me multiple things. You need to focus on just one specific thing and be precise and be exact. The last days started at Christ's resurrection. And I can prove that from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. I'll read from Hebrews 1, 1. God, who at various times and in different ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days, present tense, spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So when, maybe it was Paul, maybe it was somebody else who wrote the book of Hebrews, whoever wrote the book of Hebrews says in Hebrews 1, 2, that they were already in the last days, present tense, when the book of Hebrews was written. So the last days didn't start in 1914. They would have started at Christ's resurrection. Okay. As I said, I'm, I'm not here to refute or argue things, but when we get to the understanding that, okay, that's the last days, obviously we can see back in hindsight the last days of the Hebrew system is um, well and truly it was coming and knocking on door, and <laughs> so that's, that's obvious. So I don't know what um, you're talking about. Sorry, you need to be precise. What, what, what are you saying? Well, just the fact that the, the, the I suppose the, the Hebrew way of, or, or back in Israel, that kind of way of ruling that was established there as the Christian congregation was kind of in its foundlings, it kind of it came to an end, didn't it? You know What, what um, came to an end? I don't understand you. Okay. I, I'm not trying no to be worries. difficult, but you need to make one point be precise, be exact, and then prove that one point. Don't say half a dozen things vaguely. Okay. It well, I mean, as be... I said, I'm trying to listen, and I'm, I'm yeah. in the middle of work. I'm but for me, difficult. I was just trying to establish with yourself, for example, you rang up talking about generations, and then we went on to talk about, you know, God, God's kingdom in 1914. So I, I will, in the same manner, yes. I will try and focus on exact and specifics but it's very difficult when even in the same question you've brought up two different points and you want to talk about two different do you know what i mean so sometimes you have to accept that different parts of the bible are connected and run off of each other it's not impossible to just sort of say yes. oh no we'll take, take this one segment out and we're just looking yes. at it because it's a book that's in harmony with itself you know um Thing is, if that's you how Russell yeah, and others <laughs> have you ever spoken? With them. Yeah, have you ever spoken to a Pentecostal? Uh, maybe when I've been out, you know, pre preaching and knocking on people's doors. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm like, just going to go and sort one it's out. It's a yes/no answer. Me. Have you ever spoken yeah, I've to a Pentecostal? Yeah, I've spoken to one on the door when I've been on the ministry. Uh, yeah, you know, knocking okay. on someone's door, preaching the good news. I don't know. Yeah. Um, have you found that they never really get to the point? They just talk and talk and talk. They tell you story after story after story, but they never get to the point. They never get to the Bible, except possibly some vague out of context Bible verse. I'm not saying they're all like that. There are some good Christian people amongst them, but some of the crazy ones, you can't have a conversation with them because everything is telling you stories and emotional and, and it's emotional stuff and it's feelings. Um, I'm just saying that in that I think it's important to focus on one thing. Maybe maybe if you could show me the 1914 date from the Bible, please, I would I, I would appreciate that. OK, uh, let me take some time, research yes. some stuff and be able to get back. As I said, I've, I've just picked up a phone last minute yes. of work. So I'll have to do that. But thank you very much for your call. Yes, up. thank you. Um, thank you. I hope you have a good, pleasant rest of the day. And same to you, too, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.